for those of you I have not had the pleasure of meeting in person, I'm Joel Moses and I'm honored to be FISNI's president. Welcome to our second live presentation about sub-miniature cameras to be delivered by FISNI member Vladimir Kazan. We are fortunate to have FISNI member Ben Kudo at the web-based Zoom helm as we continue to navigate the COVID-19 environment we find ourselves in. Using this tool, we hope to connect with more of our members to share more knowledge about the universe of photography, which we all enjoy. The FISNI warehouse remains active, but not on, but on a reduced schedule out of an abundance of caution. Donations of equipment and images are welcome and a wide variety of images are finding new owners to enjoy them. Good progress is being made on the new FISNI website since its disruptive hack that occurred last year. Content is currently being migrated into place. Our membership support is critical to our continued success and we welcome suggestions on topics of interest for future presentations. Dana G has been instrumental in, in lining up our presentations and will now explain how questions from members will be handled. Dana, it's all yours. Thanks, Joel. Hi, everybody. Hi, Fisney. Um, so this is our October presentation. Um, We're going to be on Zoom probably for the coming year, um, as I understand it. So um, I just wanted to, if you're not familiar, give you a super quick screen tour of how to use it on your computer and your phone. If you move your mouse or uh, go down to the bottom of your screen, tap the bottom of your screen, the um, audio and video controls are on your left. If everyone could stay muted with a red line through your microphone throughout the presentation, uh, you can turn your camera on and off with the stop video. We are recording this for FISNI and we will be posting it on YouTube and the FISNI website most probably at some point, but only what is on screen and audible is being recorded. Um, and then at the bottom of the screen in the middle, you'll see the chat. And if you click that, you'll get a window. At the bottom is where you type in your message under where it says everyone. And um, if you have questions during the presentation, please just type them in and use the hashtag askvlad, that's hashtag A-S-K-V-L-A-D in your message and uh, leave it at the default everyone so we can all see your questions. And at the end of the presentation, I will forward those questions to Vladimir. Um, and if you have technical difficulties, you can post them in the chat also. I'll try and keep my eye on that and, and help you as best I can. Um, and the last thing is at the top of your screen on the right where it says view, um, you'll see a square with smaller squares that will switch you to gallery view, which will mean that Vlad's window will be very small. So don't click that until the end. So if you see the square with small squares, you're in speaker view, which is what you want. If anybody has any questions, I'll put all this in the chat. Um, and so uh, I would be happy to present uh, our FISNI member, Vladimir Hazan, who is presenting on Minox cameras. It's all yours, Vlad. Thank you, Dana. Hello, everybody. And uh, it is my pleasure to speak to entire FISNI community about this wonderful topic, um, sub-miniature camera, sub-miniature cameras in general, and specifically about Minox. Uh, it makes me uh, very happy to talk about it because I actually worked at the plant where Minox was uh, started manufacturing. Um, so let us begin. And uh, here we go with the first slide. 
um, we will talk about historical adventures of Minox. Um, Minox's life began in the country of Estonia in uh, 1922 when uh, Walter Zapp designed it and the patented the camera in the country of Estonia, as you can see it here. Here is the patent. But nobody in Estonia was able to begin to manufacture the camera. For that reason, Walter Zapp had to go to neighboring country, Latvia, and uh, he found a factory named VEF in Riga to begin the production of the Minox. So you can see two flags here because this is uh, red, um, white and red flag is um, Latvian flag and the other one with the um, red star and the sickle and hammer as you can understand is a Soviet symbol uh, for the time when Latvia was Soviet. And finally, Minox found its home in Germany starting 1945. So that's, that's how uh, Minox started traveling. First of all, before we will talk, to, uh, talk about small cameras, we have to decide what is actually small and what is not so small. Um, everybody be, uh, remembers the story about Gulliver. So it all depends on the perspective, how, how you look at it. Long time ago, uh, photography was not live and um, people could not actually save the images, but they can see the images. And uh, what you see on the screen here is a camera obscura that was um, created by this scientist, Al Hazen. His last name is very close to mine. It's, but he, he's not my relative. We are not related, I think. So this camera, is it big or small? Probably people those days thought it is small because it could accommodate only four persons. Comparing to the outside uh, image, this room is very small. Then Camera Obscura was uh, made even smaller than that. And uh, also it, it was possible to carry this Camera Obscura anywhere the horse could go because this this uh, cabin is um, horse driven for that reason this camera obscura was named portable it is uh, th there is a very interesting fact about this camera obscura i think it's a funny fact uh, it was converted from a bathing machine. This bathing machine is exactly the same um, uh, cabin that is horse driven into the water. People changed in, in the cabin, went to swim, and then the same horse brought them back to the shore. So that's how it started. Until 1879, it was very difficult for people to go outside to uh, take uh, photographs. Why is that? Because the technology was not the, the greatest and um, it was necessary to carry this special tent with the photographer. This special tent, it's special because it is light tight and um, um, it was uh, used to create the photosensitive layer emulsion. In 1879, 1878-79, Mr. George Eastman created dry plates and the machine that <clears throat> produced 
many, was able to produce many of those dry plates. This invention um, eliminated the necessity of the tent. So the tent is going and instead the person can carry just the dry plates, a box of dry plates. Also, George Eastman created a company named Kodak, as you know, and um, um, uh, they, they produced cameras, different cameras. This particular camera, Kodak number four, cartridge number four, was, um, was marketed as a very small camera. Why small? Because you did not need a horse, you did not need a tent, you, all you needed was just a bicycle, right? So the camera was easily hooked up to the bicycle and uh, they say it is perfectly adapted to use a wheel. Let's take a look at the camera, how it looks nowadays. I have one and um, we'll try to switch my camera right here. Can you see the camera now? Can everybody see the camera? We see it, looks great. Okay, so this is the camera and um, how big it is. It is nine inches long and um, the frame, the format that it works with is five by four inches, five by four inches. That's how small is this big camera. Uh, so it was, it was the almost smallest small, uh, it was considered small camera until 1925 when Mr. Oscar Barnack created his um, Leica. But at Kodak, they uh, worked and they made different uh, roll film, different sizes of roll film. and. Um, that these roll films were used all over the world. As you can see, this little camera, it is called Zeiss Icon Baby Box Camera. It is uh, it produced in Germany, as you understand. And this Univex company is an American company. They used uh, even smaller roll film, but the frame size is about the same, three by four. So Oscar Barnack, Barnack, as I said, created his uh, Leica in 1925 and everybody in the entire world said, this is a true miniature camera. This is a true miniature camera. This is the uh, size of the negatives uh, that uh, were produced by this camera. And then people thought, is that possible to make it smaller? And they decided, yes, it is. So they used half the frame and uh, they created some cameras that, um, uh, that produce uh, smaller 18 by 24 uh, frames. This is how they look from the back. And you can see on the Japanese camera that it's simply not cut out the entire frame, just half of it is cut out. But on the Soviet camera, um, this camera is dedicated specifically for smaller um, frame size, half frame. Um, so everything, all the other cameras that used a smaller format was named sub miniature. Some of them were just toy cameras like this mini shot camera. This is a keychain camera, it works, but it has 110 format. Uh, Minolta 16 uses 16 millimeter 
<clears throat> film. And finally, Minox that is uh, that has eight by 11 format frame. This is a comparison for um, different uh, formats. So the full frame is 24 by 36. Half frame yellow is uh, 1824. And um, the smallest one is a uh, Minox, Minox um, camera, Minox format. Having that small film, we have to have special equipment to do um, prints and uh, projector and even viewer. So uh, Walter Zapp, who is a Minox inventor, he thought of the camera as a system. And uh, because of that, he created um, special autofocus. Please understand those days, autofocus uh, enlarger and um, um, project a slide projector and special viewer that uh, enlarges the negatives. Maximum size that enlarger can um, come up with is about five by seven inches. This is how Minox uh, Riga looked and um, this is um, what I have to say about this camera. So number one, it was produced in Latvia. Number two, it was produced in uh, Riga. And number three, it was produced in VEF, at VEF factory. And this is Latvian national symbol. The, the bring, the, to bring this camera to life, for Walter Zapp took about 15 years of his lifetime. As he started designing it in 1922 and only in 37, 1937, uh, he received the first cameras that were manufactured at the factory. Now let's talk a little bit about Latvia. What is Latvia, what is Riga and what is VEF? Latvia is a small country on the Baltic Sea. How small is this big country? You can tell by looking at these numbers. It is smaller than the state of Maine. On the right side, you can see some Gothic structures. This is Riga. Riga is the capital of Latvia. And the Gothic, Gothic structures are there because Traditionally, uh, that there was a lot of German culture in Riga. Why is that? Because in 1201, Riga was founded as a German fort. Uh, traditionally, historically, in Riga, th there lived a lot of Germans, and they were called Baltic Germans. One of them was Walter Zapp. Now let's talk about VEF. What is VEF? This is VEF. VEF is a huge factory. Look at that. Huge factory. All the buildings here is one plant, one big plant. And this was in 1919 when um, VEF was founded. In the red circle, you can see the building where Minox was produced. I think it happened on the second floor, right? here, somewhere in there. So 1919, the VEF was founded and um, by the beginning of the Second World War, VEF produced a lot of uh, goods, different goods. You can see the, the variety of them, including Minox camera. But everything comes to its end and so did World War II but before Nazis lived, uh, left the country, they looted VEF and blew up several buildings. Later on, under Soviet rule, um, the VEF, VEF factory was rebuilt and uh, by 1991 became 
the leading manufacturer of uh, electronic telecommunication um, products. Only one, um, only one location in Riga carried, I mean, employed about 20,000 people. And um, people who worked at VEF proudly wore the pins that were made specifically for those who worked at the factory. You can see these pins, you can see VEF and uh, right here, they're, they're dark, so it's kind of difficult to see them. All right. But unfortunately with the um, Soviet Union, when Soviet Union collapsed, uh, Latvia could not compete with European manufacturing uh, and uh, VEF was closed. It did not produce anything anymore and it doesn't now, but the buildings are still there. And uh, you can see, you can see how beautiful Th this frontal building is. Um, right here is the building where I worked for several years and this is uh, my office window where I used to work. In front of the building you can see the statue, that statue of Zeus, also by the way also uh, created by a German sculpture a sculpture waltz. It's um, it's a symbol of uh, Riga still, and this is the building where Minox was produced. How it looks our days after restoration. The second floor is the floor where um, Minox was produced, and this is the camera. This is the camera. This is how it works. The telescopic movement advances the film and winds the uh, shutter. This camera made VEF world famous. These are technical data for the, uh, for the camera. And uh, you can tell that if chassis was made out of brass and housing stainless steel, it was a pretty heavy piece of equipment, but still using those heavy materials, the weight was only 130 grams. This is how Minox was marketed in 1940. Uh, I translated what it says here in Latvian language. It says 90% of shots without focusing uh, can be made using Minox camera. The history of the camera is very interesting because the same camera was produced in the same town, in the same factory by the same people, but it was, it, it carried different stamps. It started being made in Latvia and as you can see here, 1937. Then with Soviet occupation, everything made in Soviet Union should have um, have should have had um, stamp made in USSR. Then with uh, Nazi occupation, Minox has started wearing uh, swastikas, and only after 45 in uh, 1948, uh, Minox was produced in Germany. And you can see that the first cameras were hand engraved uh, with the word Germany, made in Germany. What uh, Walter Zapp liked tricks. And uh, when he was interviewed, uh, about uh, this camera, he said that he started 
with this this is his hand by the way he started he started um, uh, the design process with the shaping the camera and he opened his fist showing the uh, block of wood then he closed the fist and said and then the camera appeared and he opened his fist again and <clears throat> surprisingly he already had a real camera there so um, Walter Zapp created camera that fits in the fist and is lighter than a cigarette lighter because of its qualities and the size the camera was used by um, almost every intelligence companies and of course it was shown uh, in the James Bond films right right here the actor does not know how to hold the Minox and he is holding it upside down but it is not going to affect the quality of the camera now let's talk about the timeline during the its time the company produced many different uh, cameras minox cameras and uh, everything started as i said before 1936 when uh, walter zapp uh, designed and produced and tested the first camera then he brought that camera to riga and um, went to f where, where he um, uh, organized the manufacturing process of Minox. Minox was produced in Riga until 1943. And uh, after that, after that time, 1945, they moved, <clears throat> Walter Zapp moved the production to uh, Germany. He opened factory in Wetzlar and uh, started producing cameras in Wetzlar. The first cameras that he produced was uh, Minox A, but Minox A is not a camera, it's a group of cameras. Um, A1 is considered Minox that was made in Riga. A2 and 3 and 3S are Minoxes that are already produced uh, in um, Germany. Um, what's the difference? The lens was redesigned, the materials were different, metals were much lighter. Uh, the housing was made out of aluminum and um, the chassis was plastic. Um, and um, Minox A3S has a synchronization connector, which made a big difference. Minox B, it was a revolutionary camera because this camera had a selenium light meter. Selenium light meter made a big difference those days. After that, Minox C came to the scene. Minox C was fully electronic camera and uh, it had electronic shutter and the cadmium sulfide uh, meter had to be powered by px battery for that reason for that reason that minox c is uh, the longest camera and the uh, in the minox family you can see this is Minox C and this is Minox B. See how much longer it is. And um, the reason why I can show it to you. When we open the camera, number one, we can see the, we can see the um, film compartment right here. And here on the other side, we have battery compartment for that reason this camera is much longer comparing to minox b 
and of course minox A as well, because minox B is longer than minox A um, due to the uh, light meter. The next model that was produced after minox C was, look at that, minox LX. Minox LX is totally different camera. Number one, it's fully electronic. It also powered by the same battery PX27, but the shutter is much faster. As you can see here, uh, the shortest uh, speed is one two thousandth of a second. And uh, if you notice, all the all the push buttons here on the older Minoxes are aligned. That is because Walter Zap created many attachments, and uh, all of them had specific access to the button. This one does not. Uh, have it on the same spot, but um, so, so these attachments are not working on the um, on the camera on this camera. The next one is a uh, Minox EC. Minox EC is much smaller than everything else. Uh, it is called poor man's spy camera. Why is that? Because um, it has plastic housing. Uh, it works only from one meter uh, until uh, infinity. And, uh, but it uses the same format. A uh, fun effect about this camera is that KGB modified this camera. They used special film, special thin film, and um, that film allowed to uh, make 110 shots. The next model after Minox EC was uh, Minox AX. Minox AX uh, is a fully is a fully mechanical camera. Uh, it just has uh, LX um, LX housing. And finally, the final model was a digital camera. The having funny I think it's funny abbreviation DSC DSC stands for digital spy camera. Uh, <clears throat> it, it is different comparing to other uh, digital cameras because the screen is located on the flash unit and without the flash the photographer cannot see what he just had, what, what kind of picture he took. All the other models were about the same uh, versions, um, they were versions of uh, LX, CLX, chrome plated, TLX, titanium plated, um, gold AX uh, commemorating uh, 50 years of Minox in Germany. And um, finally, to summarize the Minox timeline, we see, uh, we look at this um, chart. Uh, Riga Minox was produced in uh, Riga until 1943 and um, 1948. Uh, the production was moved to Germany and all the other cameras were made in Germany. In 1974, Minox company decided to go for a 35 millimeter camera. This is what they created. They created the smallest 35 millimeter camera. Believe it or not, this camera takes 35 millimeter film. This is how it looks when it's folded. And uh, this base can be used as a lens hood when it, it's too much light, too much sun around. So, 
five millimeter, the smallest camera in the world. Uh, as all good things are, uh, people try to copy good things. And um, Minox 35 was not, uh, actually it was copied by Soviet factory. Unfortunately, it was not, <clears throat> it was not a um, lucky try because this new camera that was made in Soviet Union did not work as good as well as uh, the original. In 2001, Walter Zapp came to visit Riga and Estonia. He wanted to celebrate his 100th birthday in uh, Riga, but unfortunately, he did not live long enough. He died 98 years of age. And, um, um, but that time when he was in Riga and uh, Estonia, he was awarded an Estonian, highest Estonian or, order here. And uh, he received honorary doctorate from the Latvian Academy of Sciences. Um, after his death, Latvian Academy of Sciences um, established Walter Zapp Award. This Walter Zapp Award was, uh, people were honored with this uh, award for worldwide recognition of Latvia. This is how the diploma looked, or still looks, and uh, the person received this diploma with this medal. All the other, the, the other two pictures are just for you, for your information. This is uh, Latvian Academy of Sciences, and this is Latvian national symbol. Um, our days, Minox is still in use. People use it, and uh, there are different societies for uh, Minox. Um, one of them, uh, is uh, on LinkedIn. This person, Julian Tennis, um, established this society. I joined that society and um, I used the liberty to use his uh, photographs because he placed them on internet. These two pictures were taken by Minox camera. In Japan, they produced um, one third scale classic cameras. And uh, those cameras use Minox format if they are not digital, of course. Um, Minox still works. But our days, there is no cameras anymore from coming from Minox. Minox produces, um, Minox produces optical devices binoculars, um, uh, this pocket telescope, and this very interesting device. This is weather station. This weather station is very good for sea traveling, for traveling in general. It can show the altitude where the person is. It can show the, um, how strong, how strong the wind is and uh, all, the other, all the other parameters necessary when you are traveling. So this is it for my presentation. These are my uh, sources. One of them is, uh, you can see here, youtube.com. And uh, this is the link for that presentation. This presentation is about Walter Zapp, about his life, about his fight for the camera because uh, it was not uh, just smooth as um, we could have thought. Uh, this camera exists mostly because um, Walter Zapp had will to win, and he did. Okay, oops, sorry, sorry, that's something else. That's the camera. That's the show, <laughs> accidentally. Um, 
OK. Vlad, if you want to share your screen one more time and just go to your last slide. Um, I, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So uh, this is the this is my sources. And um, the, these are the cameras that I demonstrated today. We went through these five cameras. And this is a good time for everybody to ask questions. Um, so I am ready to answer questions if you have any. Vlad, if you could unshare your screen so we can all see you. Yeah, I'm here. Can no, you see me? Stop, stop sharing your screen. There you go. OK. Thank you. That was wonderful. Um, sure. Let's see. My pleasure. Uh, there are um, a few things I just wanted to mention. Um, these, these Zoom talks are a great way for people to attend from all over the country. So I'm so happy that we can do this and that all of our far-flung members can see these programs. And um, uh, I'll get started with the questions, but I just wanted to mention that we have a presentation next month with Steve Dunwell, who's an industrial uh, New England mill photographer. And December, this is important, December, we're going to try a show and tell holiday party on December 6th. I'm going to post a link in the chat where there's a sign up sheet if you would like to do a five minute share of something that you would like to share with your fellow FISNI members. Uh, hopefully the sign up will work. I'll post that in just a second. And um, if anyone um, would like to suggest presentations, they can email me at programs at fisney.org. Um, and we have some questions. Uh, Chuck Fell, I'm sorry, Chuck, if I mispronounced your name. Do they still make Minox film and print development mailers? I think so. And uh, um, it's, um, it's the company named uh, uh, Moon, Blue Moon, Blue Moon, right? Uh, they actually cut 35 millimeter film that you can do by yourself. You can buy the device that cuts the films and uh, do it by yourself. The only problem is to uh, actually load that tiny uh, container for the for the Minox. And they, of course, develop the cameras, uh, the, the films. So does Blue Moon also supply the cartridge? Um, they probably do, but I'm not sure. Okay. Never used the service. Reich is asking, how long did Walter Zapp work at Minox? Uh, that is a trick question. <laughs> um, because to, to produce, to design the camera, as I said before, took him 15 years. But then in Germany, um, he had a conflict with the financial people and he was actually pushed out of his own company. For 40 years, he worked as a consultant only. But as you can see, his ideas, his designs, his uh, spirit was there in the, in, the, in the camera. We can tell it is. Uh, he, he was back to the, to the company um, 1999, I think. And um, after that, they started making cameras with his signature with his to commemorate Walter Zapp. Thank you. Sure. Um, I think this is Ben asking, what is the rarest or most sought after Minox? The rarest is, of course, Riga Minox. Riga Minox. You can find them on the eBay uh, for more than a thousand dollars. See, um, David Starkman is asking, we have a Minox A Wetzlar. How can one date it? 
it depends which A is that. It could be 2, 3, or 3S. Three if it has the synchronization contact, then it is definitely 3S. But if it's not, it could be either A2 or A3. We have to, you, you, you have to um, go to Minox website and uh, just simply to compare. But they all will take, they all will take the same uh, format um, film. And um, if the camera is intact, then I don't see why it wouldn't work. You, you will be able to get wonderful pictures still. Bill Cress wants to know if, if one wanted to pick one Minox to own and use today, which model would you recommend? I would recommend something with the electronic shutter because Minox B has um, um, not electronic meter and those meters probably don't work anymore. But electronic, they, they have to work as soon as the battery will be in place. Uh, Sid Chatterjee wants to know if there was any special reason why Zap relocated to the Wetzler home of Leica? <laughs> uh, yeah. There was uh, a period of time when um, Leica actually bought Minox and then Minox separated from Leica again. So it's, uh, it's financial issues. Drama. Mm -hmm. um, Larry Woods says, how did advances in film technology, resolution in particular, affect the usefulness of the eight by 11 millimeter format? Well, our days, electronic and uh, digital cameras, of course, they can be much smaller and uh, the resolution can be um, much better. But for the time, Minox was, um, was one of the best cameras of, um, out of uh, sub-miniature format. See. Um, here's a question from Jerry Berenson. I have a digital Minox 10.1 megapixel DC1011. Is it made by Minox or a Japanese firm licensed to Minox? Uh, if it carries Minox sign, Minox mouse, it is a Minox. Let's see. Okay. I actually had a few questions. Um, sure. if anyone else wants to submit, we still have time. Um, how popular were they? Like how many consumers were walking around with Minox during its heyday as compared to other cameras? Like small percentage of people or? It's a, it's a very good question because originally Minox was made, uh, actually designed by Walter Zapp as um, a uh, camera that can be used without uh, a lot of spe special knowledge of photography, in photography. But uh, the manufacturing process became way too expensive. And in order to compensate those uh, expenses, uh, the camera became, was sold for a lot of money. Not too many people could afford to buy the, the camera. It became um, a very um, prestige thing to have. Besides, uh, the uh, intelligence, cam uh, intelligence companies uh, always used all intelligence, the entire world intelligence companies used Minoxes, even KGB, as I said before. <laughs> So if you were using Minox today and you did not have a special Minox enlarger, how would you go about printing? I would negative? send it to Blue Moon. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, the, the picture of the enlarger was fascinating. How about how big was it? Can you show us with your hands? Uh, it's about this big. 
I don't know. Can you see? Yeah. <laughs> Couple, like a foot and a half or something. Yeah, something like that. And uh, yeah, I mean, Blue Moon um, should be, you should be able to find it online by just Googling Blue Moon and Minox. Probably, correct? probably, yes. I've never used it. I never used Minox, actually, uh, because of the film. And, um, I just recently bought the smallest one, EC. I enjoy just looking at it. <laughs> They're amazingly engineered. They're beautiful cameras. Yes, um, yes. Ben is asking, is it common to digitize the negatives nowadays? Yes, you can do it even yourself. If you have a scanner, you can scan anything. My son scanned more than 13,000 uh, photographs that um, we brought when we came from Soviet Union we, to the United States. And uh, I brought negatives, negatives that were made by my father, myself, and my brother-in-law. And uh, my son scanned all of them, 13,000 people. Now we have all our pictures somewhere on the internet. Well, um, no, you can digitize. Larry Wood says Blue Moon offers scanning with processing, so you can get them scanned as you get them. Okay, to okay. Um, I would and, expect that. And somewhere else, I think Larry said that the film is not cheap. The, the film is about $20 and processing is about $30. So, wow. Um, it's much, much more than this camera. This camera. <laughs> I, I bought this camera, I was lucky, for $13 on eBay. <laughs> uh, now I can find it for, for about $80 or $90, something like that. What's the most valuable one? Uh, the most valuable to me is uh, Riga Minox. The very Pro first ones. Yeah, probably because I worked at that plant. <laughs> and... Um, uh, I, I, I would like to have it. I would love to have it, but it is way too expensive. I can't afford that. More than a thousand dollars for a little thing. No. <laughs> uh, Joseph says, so how many were made of the various models? I guess. Um, the, the most interesting uh, number about the production is, um, connected with the Riga Minox because uh, those days, it was the most difficult uh, time for Minox. Um, it was Latvia, then Soviet Union, then uh, Nazis um, uh, production. But up to 1943, um, VEF produced 17,500 cameras of uh, Riga Minox, Riga Minox. And uh, they all, as I said before, they all uh, carried different stamps, made in Latvia, made in USSR and swastikas. And then after the war, made in USSR again. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm sorry, because 1943 and 1945, the uh, production was moved to Germany. So then it was Germany. Uh, ben says, what caused you to first become interested in Minox? Why Minox? And I think... <laughs> Why Minox? Uh, first, my first time when I saw Minox and I fell in love with it was uh, when one of my co-workers, an older person, brought it to work. He showed it to everybody and he said he worked at, on the team and he actually produced these cameras. He, yeah, he showed the camera, Riga Minox. He showed the enlarger. He showed the film tank. He showed the projector. It was very fascinating show to me. That's, that's, that's why Minox. By the way, my next presentation I am working on is a history of uh, 
Zeiss icon. And um, whenever it will be possible, I would love to talk about Zeiss icon um, history. Thank you so much. Um, this sure, has been my pleasure. Um, if everybody looks at the chat, there's a link to sign up for the December show and tell. So if you would like to share any. Um, and Vladimir, we can't thank you enough. This was fantastic. Um, I'm glad you liked it. And uh, it was my pleasure to talk to the entire community. So um, I think what we can do now uh, is just socialize. Um, ben, is that what we're going to do? Just everybody unmute? And uh, if you're in speaker view. Could, may I ask a question? Sure. I tried, I tried to send it through the chat, but it didn't seem to go through. Would you discuss the chain on the Riga, I mean on the Minox, that has a little the balls for measuring distance? Yes, absolutely. This, this is the chain. This is the chain. And this, at the end of the chain, or the beginning of the chain, is the thing that you put it, you connect it to the button on your shirt. This little leather piece. Then the chain has um, steps. Each step corresponds to a certain distance between the camera, between the camera and the original. So without measuring, without measuring the distance, you know exactly how far from the, um, from the uh, original the camera is. That's, that's what the, the purpose of the chain. Very good Thank question. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sure. My pleasure. Dana, you had asked about um, everyone going off mute. So um, I, I think that would be a great timing now. And maybe while we do have some people off mute, maybe we could all give Vlad a virtual round of applause. You could probably hear us. So thank you, Vlad. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, uh, I, I'm really glad to hear these applauds. Um, how many, Ben, how many people are in audience today? We had about 57 um, during the peak, and it looks like everyone stayed on through the end and, and had a lot of questions. So I think we had a really engaged audience. Um, so it, what everyone can do at this point is, um, remember, as Dana mentioned in the beginning, we're all on record, but you're more than welcome to, to speak. If you speak, chances are your, your face will pop up on the video. So if anyone wants to say hi to uh, their friends who are here or thank Vlad, now's a great time to do that. So Vlad, thank you so much. Thank you very much. And uh, I, can, I can say that, well, I'm, I'm a teacher. I teach at the college and uh, my top number of my audience was 40 people. Uh, before now it's 57. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ed, what do you teach? Um, I teach different um, subjects, mostly science and math. Dana, I'm not seeing um, the uh, the sign up for December's meeting. Will you will you email out something to everybody? You know, we can post it on the FISNI site and I'm, um, there are 10 slots for five minutes each and then there's an overflow at the bottom. So there should be 20 slots and uh, a few are taken. Uh, I will post it in the chat again right now. Let me go to my document and um, continue talking amongst yourselves while I do that. Um, so Dana, where, where is that? Where is in the that? chat, if you go down to the bottom of your screen, uh -huh. there's chat. a little chat. And if you click on that, you'll get a sidebar. You should anyway. And uh, I just posted the link to the sign up for the December 6th um, show and tell. Yeah, that, that's what I want to find. And, uh, Are you, did you click on chat? Yes. And you don't see the chat? I see the chat, but I don't see December 6th. <laughs> no, it's just the link. It's just at the very bottom. Scroll down. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, we're going to see how this goes. Um, 
it's it's terrible not to meet in person, but maybe we can attempt something of a holiday okay. party. And to, to, si to sign up, I have to just click sign up, right? You should be able, yeah, if it doesn't work, send me an email at a program, is it programs? Sign up. Programs at fisney.org. Um, and we'll, we'll try, I think it worked for Joel. Sign up. No, Dana, no. I was able to just sign up as well. So I signed up uh, to share about Canon cameras. Great. <laughs> Can't wait. I'm going to um, go grab my Minix. I'll be right back. All right. Yeah, we could do <laughs> a show and tell right Google. now for, for a, as far as that goes. If anybody's got a Minux lurking around in their apartment. Um, oh, uh, I believe you sent me an email uh, that, I, that I just got today. Is that Joe? Yes. Hi. Yes, I did. So you, there should be a link in there. And I guess you'd mentioned to Joel, you'd like to share some stuff. So that's a perfect place to do it. It, it may be. Uh, well, I, I sent an email to the uh, editor of your uh, of the uh, uh, of the journal. Uh, maybe I don't have the right title that I had bought a movie camera that I thought I could write an article about. Maybe that's how that came about to your attention. Um, or if it's longer than five minutes, why not do a presentation for us? You know, we'd love to have you. Well, I don't know if I could do a whole presentation about <laughs> one camera. Well, that, there that should be a sign-up link in the email that, I sent you. That had, that had one model, not a whole series of models <laughs> over, over quite a few decades. <laughs> what What is the camera? It's a... Uh, it's a Kimco 16 millimeter movie camera. The only oh, person wow. I ever, the only person I ever knew it had it with the projector and all of and the whole literature that came with it was Alan Cattell, who many of you knew, I'm sure. I, I live in Chicago, so it's wonderful oh, to have, it's wonderful to have Zoom meetings because I attended one show once, and that's the only thing years ago. And that's the only thing I ever was able to do in person with FISNY, other than get to be on the mailing list and so on. And I, I, I wrote an article for the journal a few years ago. Joseph, oh, um, I, we like these uh, practice sessions too, because uh, Vlad and I practiced uh, quite a few times leading up to this. And we always get to hang out and talk about our uh, cameras afterwards. And it's funny because you know, oh, I grew up in a big family, but I'm the only one who likes cameras. So no, I have no one to ever talk to about my camera, my cameras, except for, for Vlad and you guys. So it's, it's great to see everyone. Here's, here's one of my uh, Minox. I've got it with the um, original belly band sleeve. Uh, you can tell it's old because it compares it to a pack of cigarettes. So that would not go over big <laughs> nowadays, but I've got, I've got the, uh, the 35. Uh, and actually I learned a trick from Vlad too afterwards. And when, he said that normally you hold the camera like this and the in the in the um the front flips down to let the lens out but if you hold it upside down that that front part becomes a lens shade yeah which i thought was really cool yeah that that's how it's made actually it was designed this way it's really smart yeah i loved the uh the actor holding the minox upside down <laughs> of course <laughs> <laughs> well in that case, he, he was not protecting the camera from sunlight. <laughs> <laughs> I have a few Minox items here if you want to see them. Sure. What have you got, Jerry? Yeah. Well, this is, um, this is what I mentioned to you, the Minox 1011. Oh, wow. The di digital camera. I don't know. Huh? Well, I want to know if it was made by Minox. Yeah. If it, but uh, said, it, it's if... very, very, very small. 35 millimeter. There's also a CD I have. Wow. Wow. Of, wow. Walt, of Walter Zapp. I don't know if wow. it was put up by Leica at that time when they acquired the company. Yeah. I'm not sure. Very inter it tells us whole life. It's very interesting. The other two things I do have that the PL. You know, with the like the other one. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, unfortunately, everything it took was overexposed, but that's another story. <laughs> yeah, these, these Minoxes, as you showed, they are very interesting cameras because um, um, to uh, 
different 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 minox different model had a dedicated flash gun look at this so this is yeah, the, like this yeah, yeah. right mm -hmm. so it, you can see the difference right on this right. camera on my camera uh flash is uh one uh the, the same size as the camera okay i see yours is kind of half of it or three quarters right, right. The, the the other thing is my ec yes has, this, this has, is the has, beauty but this has this has a cube adapter <laughs> as yeah. well as as well as electronic flash yes on. yes um so, actually actually minox produced different different adapters for uh mm -hmm. different different um flashes of mm -hmm. course of course it was this one this this is the um right fla I had flash that. gun mm -hmm. the actual flash gun with the mm -hmm. uh let me, let me switch to the camera so you can see better Okay, so um, I don't know, can, for some reason, what's going on? Why, for some reason, it just went dark. I can Rod, see. we can see you okay. We can see you, and we I can see, see the uh, table. I can't see anything. Oh, okay. Vlad, because right. everyone else is unmuted now, when, when if it goes away from you, once you start talking again after like a sentence, it will come back to you. Okay. Okay. So uh, this is the flash gun, and it has the synchronization contact inside. So, so you just put this on the uh, Minox. Uh, <laughs> camera which has the contact and uh so so this opening this opening uh coins uh falls on the lens right and uh that's how it will go on okay boy all right then another another attachment is this again it has the uh, synchronization contact but here you can see the hot shoe again you can put it on and uh, you can use uh, electronic flashes um what else this one is for the cube the the, the same as you just showed right mm -hmm. so this is the attachment of the the port for the cube All right and uh, this one, I love this the most because this one, again, it has the synchronization contact. And here is the spot where you put the lamp, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but any lamp, any flash has to have a reflector, right? Mm -hmm. This one doesn't, right? But it's only for the first sight when you do the magic move <laughs> and uh, this is the reflector <laughs> see it goes down and and out <laughs> and the lamp works this way so the, they are different different attachments for uh, uh, flashes to use with the Minox camera. And of course, 35 millimeters have um, uh, cameras, have, uh, I mean, flashes um, uh, dedicated to each camera. And as you can see here, the push button is brought up. So when I, let me take it out. At the bottom, we have another end of the same button, right? So you can shoot without taking uh, the flash off. 
Vlad, I had two things. Um, sure. One, could you show us about the film advance on, uh, for instance, the Minux B? Because I was really impressed with the film advance mechanism. And then the other thing is, can you show us that tripod that you have? Oh, sure. So film advances, um, when you open the camera, right now it's a neutral position for the camera. When you open the camera like this, uh, you advance the film and you wind the shutter at the same time. Now you have to push the, the button to release the shutter and only then you can close the camera. So you just took uh, a picture, right? Now the, the next one, to take a next an, another one, you have to open the flash, uh, I mean the camera again. And uh, look at this, see this surface? rough surface, I can move it and the filter is covering the lens. Can you see it? <laughs> so it's a light filter. All right. And um, tripod, sure, tripod. I love this tripod because it is a tripod and the uh, monopod in the same time. Look at this. This is, let me move everything out. Okay. This is, it looks like monopod, right? Remember, we, we used uh, monopods. But actually, it is a tripod. How does it work? You open this, you unscrew this button and you screw it into the ball joint. You unscrew another leg and you screw it into the ball joint again. Right? So this is the tripod, but this is not it. Now we have this um, mountain screw where we can connect the holder for the for the camera and uh, we screw it on we screw this holder on Okay. Okay. And now we can insert the camera Can you see it well? Now you you can insert the camera into this holder. Right? Just like this but watch the push button this is the push button hello right so i am inserting the camera into the holder okay and i uh, oh. tight this screw and uh, look at that the push button is here, but the, the camera is not uh, winded, right? So to wind the camera, to advance the uh, film, we move it up. Now the camera, the push button is right under the uh, special point here on the camera holder. To utilize that special point, we have to unscrew one more thing from the, from the tripod. And that one thing is, what is it? Can you see what is it? 
it's a cable release, right? This cable release goes right into this magic spot and uh, the camera is ready to shoot. Okay. <laughs> Vladimir, so. um, David, uh, no, I'm sorry, Greg says that he has two Minox enlargers in the box. Is there a website he can post pictures to? And uh, Greg, on the FISNY website, if you go to the snapshots section on the front page, at the bottom, there's a link for the snapshots archive, and I believe mail them pictures there if you want them featured in, sh in snapshots. Does anyone else have a recommendation on a Minox enthusiast website? Uh, there is a society, Minox uh, Society on uh, LinkedIn. Julian Tenace is uh, the uh, founder of that society. Uh, that there are many forums of, on, on Minox on the uh, internet. You can, you can talk to collectors, you can talk to other people, you can communicate. Dana, you know, one other good spot where, I, I think that probably should go in a few spots, but one spot it could also go would be on the FISNY Facebook page. So for oh, anyone yes. who has um, a Facebook account, we do have a FISNY group on Facebook. And actually, after this um, video session is wrapped up, we did want to invite everyone to any anyone who's interested to go over to our Facebook page and continue the conversation about Minox, about cameras in general, about FISNY. Um, if there's anyone who wants to participate in more conversations, I think we'll probably wrap up um, at nine o'clock or a few minutes before nine o'clock tonight. And then anyone who still wants to uh, continue the conversation, Facebook will be a great place to do that. So if you're not signed up for Facebook or haven't followed FISNY, it's a great time to do it. And I, I would personally love to see those two enlargers in the box and out of the box, but um, you know, from, yeah. from Greg. So that's awesome. Yeah. Dana, could you please ask that um, enlarger uh, owner if those enlargers are autofocus? Oh, Greg, are you still there? Um, did you hear that question? I will ask him on the chat as well. Thank you. Vladimir, thank you, because I have a tripod, but I didn't realize there was a sync cord in there. <laughs> I just yes. learned something. Thank you. Did Did you find it? I, I'm opening it up now. <laughs> Can you hear me? One thing of interest I don't think has been mentioned is the business of when you open the camera, it advances the film and cocks the shutter. On the earlier models, if you didn't take a picture when you close the camera you lost that shot, it would be a blank shot. Next time you open the camera, it would be a new shot. They, they did uh, fix that uh, uh, two or three models in into the 50s. That is correct. Everything you said is correct. Yeah, you, you, you lose the shot. You lose the, the one frame, you lose one frame. If you don't take it, you lose it. And I noticed on the um, film, film cartridge and it said only 15 exposures. So that would be, that would be a lot of the film. Greg did uh, chime in. I heard Greg's voice uh, just a minute ago. Greg, do you want to um, go ahead and speak? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 Uh, uh, I haven't had them out of the box in years, but I'm pretty sure they're, uh, the two different serial numbers are, I don't know, maybe a thousand or 2000 apart. And they're both a little bit different. Uh, uh, I believe they are autofocus, but it does have a focus adjustment on the lens. Okay. I don't know if they're completely out of focus, like some of the light enlargers. And uh, Greg, where were they made? In uh, Riga or in Germany? I think, I believe they were made in Germany. Okay. It's interesting for a spy camera, it's not exactly silent when you use the mechanical. Um, 
clicking it open and close. So uh, that sort of gives you away if you're trying to be sneaky. Well, but it's much more quieter than uh, other other mechanical cameras. It's, when, it's hard to tell. Maybe it's the uh, computer making it sound louder than it is. Possible, but uh, when I was a schoolboy, I used to bring my camera, which was uh, Zorky, uh, Leica actually, uh, uh, to school. And to cover the sound of the shutter, I had to do this. <clears throat> <laughs> What makes it a spy camera is the fact that you can sneak it in and sneak it out of whatever you're taking pictures of. While you're taking pictures, it's obvious you're taking pictures. That, oh, yeah. Uh, no, yes. I... This, um, what, what makes it spy camera is actually the size of it and the possibility to take the pictures actually without focusing. Right. I... The thing also is that it's just so gorgeous that it's like any other James Bond fantastic gadget in that it's really sleek and sexy looking and uh, yeah. you can stick it in your tuxedo jacket. <laughs> Vlad, one thing that you showed off the last time was the film container. Uh, oh, sure. And you, you also talked about how a spy might use that. Can you show us a close up oh. of that on your, yeah. on your screen? Sure, sure. Sure. So these are film containers. Let me bring my camera closer. Okay. These are film containers. And uh, this one either is empty or uh, the film is over and is on, on one of the sides. See that there is no film here. This one still has a film. And uh, when, when the film is over, when the film is over, what real spies did, they broke off an empty part of, the, of this container. And they had only this big, this big uh, container with a film. This is a real microfilm, this one, okay? Eight by eleven, so you could put it. I don't know in in your ear, <laughs> right? To hide it, it's it's very small. But and, I've got a question for you. Sure. Um, for thirty-five millimeter film, I think the speeds are common to have anywhere from one hundred, say, to sixteen hundred, might be your your average film, but. With the grain size being uh, relatively so much more apparent on a Minox film, did that cause people to go more towards like the 25 ISO or super fine grain film? And how was that, uh, was that factored in in the speed of the lens or anything? Or, or what can you say about that, that concept? Well, uh, all, the, all the films, as I said before, Minox films, can be simply cut out of regular 35 millimeter films. So the, the grain is the same and uh, um, the, the uh, situation with the lens is the same. The, the higher the uh, uh, speed is, the more, uh, the rougher the grain is. And uh, Long time ago, when I uh, made a lot of copies, I used to make a lot of copies using just single lens reflex camera. Um, I used very low uh, speed uh, film. It was like four ASA, four ASA. For that re for that reason, um, I um, I could get very contrast text. That's what I needed to get because I was copying text and um, uh, that low speed allowed to um, create only black and white, no gray colors. No gray colors on the, picture, on the photographs. Okay. 
The early cameras, I don't know the later ones, the early cameras did not have a diaphragm. They only exposed the three point, the lens was 3.5 and that's what you got all the time. So non, they, none of the minoxes have a diaphragm. So for slow speed film, you're always shooting at 3.5. The, the shutter range, you know, is a, a thousand at the high end, of, you know, something still below handheld at the low end. So even back in the early days when the best film you could get would probably be something like ASA 80, uh, you, you just did it at 3.5. Um, yeah, yeah, but um, you, you do not uh, need that. You, you just, in, in Minox, in Minox, uh, it is designed so so uh, you can uh, use different different speed shutters, uh, shutter speeds, right? And uh, it will be the same lens. The lenses always open uh, fully. So, and because it is mostly to copy, it is designed mostly to copy flat subjects we do not need depth of field. So I think that's how it works. But again, I've never used the Minox. Vlad, uh, yeah. how was the film kept flat on the focal plane? When you cocked it, did it move a pressure plate back or was it under tension? That is a very complicated mechanism, Sid very complicated and uh, I cannot describe it. I cannot <laughs> describe it. <laughs> um, you, you go, uh, the, there is an explanation to your question. It is a very, very specific question and um, uh, you can find the explanation on uh, internet on, uh, from, from people who actually work there. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, I'm sorry, I, I can't. Yeah. Do you know if they did anything like do a slight curvature on the uh, on the focal plane to take care of the lens? Yes, curvature? yes, yes. Right. yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, for everyone who can see, Dana gave us a, a tour at the beginning, but if you go up to view uh, the top right corner of, of the speaker window and you hit view and you switch to gallery view, you'd be able to see everyone who's participating. Can everyone uh, do that and, and see each other? Um, so I wanted to do uh, an informal survey of how many people here already own a, a Minix camera or two? How many own one? One. <laughs> and after, after the presentation, how many people are gonna be shopping on eBay for like a Minix <laughs> key or a <laughs> I'm going to be I'm trying to get one. one. <laughs> I need a five minute head start with everyone. <laughs> so um, it's, it's very good to see you here. I am sitting on something that ends in about 10 minutes on eBay. So I'm going to say good night, but thank you very much. I really appreciated this. I'm down thank here in Florida and uh, the, the one or two collectors that I'm friendly with who are down here but uh, I sure miss not being up in Boston with you guys. Good to see you, Bill. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Bill. Thank, thank you. you. I'm glad you liked the presentation. And thank you for letting me know about the tripod, uh, the cable. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah. It was, it was there. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> Learn something but, new every day. I <laughs> Vladimir, thank you for a very nice presentation. And how. Sure, very my informed. pleasure. Nicely done. Yeah. There's a Can link I'd... to the Facebook page in the chat as well. Good night, okay. everybody. Good night. Take my, care, my, next, my next presentation will be about Zeiss Icon um, history. And um, I already started working on that. It, it is very interesting. It is fascinating how uh, one person who was um, who was uh, general director of that company, he, he was chosen uh, for that role. He actually, when uh, Zeiss Icon was put together, 
he himself personally he went through all the models all the cameras that were produced by different companies that uh, made Zeiss icon personally he went through all of them and he created the main line of the cameras that were produced after, under Zeiss icon logo mm. Dana, it might be a good time for us to wrap up for the night. Um, sure. And I think it was a really great uh, presentation by Vlad. And, and for everyone in the audience, thank you so much for staying on mute and for asking questions in the chat. And, and Dana and Joel, thank you so much for, uh, for, for kind of emceeing it. And of course, Mr. Vlad, Brilliant. my hat's off to you, Vlad. <laughs> hey, thanks. Everybody who participated, it's, it's great to see this much activity online yeah all right it all right was, so it was very nice talking here it was very nice to get all the questions and uh, i thank everyone thank you vlad thank, thank you vlad. everyone i'm going to go ahead and end the meeting for us but if anybody wants to pop over to the uh, facebook group it is facebook.com forward slash fisney for Photographic Historical Society, New England. So it's p uh, for uh, facebook.com slash P-H-S-N-E, Disney. So Vlad, thank you so much. And um, everyone, hopefully we'll see you back here uh, next month. Yes. Yeah, thank you, Vlad. All right. Hey, Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Have Take a good care, night, everyone. everybody. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.